to go from the 20-yard line. Ziegler and Covington are the running backs. Inside handoff to Ziegler, and he gets a yard and then gets driven back by. He was really hammered. Dave as he tried Wolf. to go straight ahead. That was the same play that opened the ball game. Opened the first half, opened the second half. First time Syracuse got the ball, they ran Ziegler straight ahead. Same thing here. Wolf, the linebacker, number 50, just held his ground when he saw the opening. Boy, he just came up and really put the hit on. Quarterback is Todd Norley. Running backs are split. Open field to Norley's right. Jamie Covington to near the 30-yard line. Covington on the carry. Held on to by number 49, John Hawk. Boy, Brent Ziegler just does a great job. He doesn't get uh, he doesn't get the headlines because he doesn't. But boy, does he do a job blocking? And he was one of the primary blockers that let that play go for as much as it did. Brent Ziegler up hard, number 43, the fullback. All right, we're going to have the straight T, power T, or a set T formation on third and very short. Goes to Covington, and he gets the first down. Jamie and incidentally, on the subject of Brent Ziegler, we'd like to thank his mother very much for writing us a nice letter. Uh, the Ziegler, all his family and friends apparently watched the ball game on television in Long Island, and we are very appreciative of the fact that Mrs. Ziegler wrote us a letter. Thank you. We hope some more of you will as well. First and ten for the Orange. Bruckner to the right, Hackett left, open field right. Lots of time. Let's it go to Bruckner at the 45. Bruckner is hit there by 49 John Hoff, but it is a Syracuse first down. Just a quick observation. It seems that the offense, as we see Norley throwing the ball, seems to be moving a little bit better under the guidance of Norley than Chris Dula. Granted, Chris Dula has not gotten the ball in great field position, but uh, Norley looks very confident. You know, it's very interesting to watch those two fellows because they're style of play, their approach to the game is very different. Norley and Krista Dulu. Covington to about the 46-yard line, short gain of about a yard. Wolf, the linebacker, number 50 again, very active. The co-captain who gets the defenses in from the sideline for Colgate was in on the tackle along with Jeff Knight, the other linebacker. Good look at the Syracuse bench. Bill Pendock, 99, out of Liverpool. Mike Charles getting a little bit of a rest here. The Syracuse offense sees what they can do to start the second half. Second and a long nine. Pitch to Covington. Jamie gets just inside Colgate territory to the 49-yard line. Syracuse first down territory is the 45. So that will leave the Orange four yards short on third down. You know that little toss sweep, and all he does is we see how he picked up 151 yards and two touchdowns on that little toss sweep. He gets the ball coming in the tailback, reads the block, and if the hole opens up inside, he cuts inside. If it opens up outside, naturally he goes outside, and he's making a living off of it so far today. Mike Morris left, Marcus Hackett right. Third and four. Norley to hack it good at the 35-yard line. He breaks away once but not twice, and he's down at the 35. Brought down by, again, number 49, John Hoff. Hackett showing very well there that he made the catch first before he started going downfield. Sometimes you get that ball, it's so open, you want to start running downfield. He made his curl move, concentrated on the ball, then he ran out towards the sideline, broke it outside for a good gain in the first down. Nice play by Marcus Hackett, the junior out of New Jersey. Norley now five out of six for 64 yards. First and ten from the 35. Hangs it up for Morris. If he can get there, it's a touchdown. Well, it's not a touchdown. <laughs> you said it right. If he, he got there, but unfortunately, he lost his balance. So it'll be first and goal from the two-yard line. He got there. It didn't look like he was going to be able to get there because that ball was a long way out in front of him. But he stretched out for it, and that caused him to lose his balance and stumble. Well, Mike Morris runs a 9-200, and that's one of the differences between the big boys and Division I AA is you'll seldom find somebody who's got that kind of speed, and Morris has not been that effective up to date, but he made a nice catch there. Big 
Ziegler in for the touchdown. Good look there at Mrs. Ziegler's son Brent out of Long Island. West Islip, he won the final yard. He's been blocking all day. He deserved that one. That is 12 in a row for Russ Carpenteri, and the score is now Syracuse 28 and Colgate 12. After the 32 yard pass reception by Mike Morris on the very next play first and goal Brent Ziegler into the end zone for the touchdown. So now Ziegler has one Covington has two on runs and Covington threw a touchdown Kevin pass Haney to Todd Norley. 10 51 left to play third period at the dome crowd of better than 30,000 well over 30,000 I guess as Syracuse and Colgate meet for the 64th time. This will be the last time for four more years and then there is another four year series which begins in 1987. Syracuse and Colgate didn't play at all between 1961 and 1980. Last year was the first time that Syracuse and Colgate had played since 1961 after an almost uninterrupted series beginning in 1891. Both coaches feel it's, it's very good for Central New York football, and of course it's a natural. There was a time there, of course, when they felt that Syracuse and Colgate was really a, a mismatch, but Colgate come on very strong under front Dunlap. They have a good football program, and this is a good football team out here today. I understand. I didn't read the whole article, but somebody who did told me that the New York Times said today that Colgate very probably is the best Division One AA football team in the country. Well, they'll have a chance to prove it, and they're going to have a chance to not run this one out. Now, Aaron Bird takes it to the back of the end zone. Aaron Bird downs the kickoff in the end zone. In Division One AA, 12 teams qualify for the playoffs. This Monday, seven of them are conference champions. Then there are two independents and three at-large selections. The at-large selections can come from other teams in the conferences. So Colgate has one chance to fill five positions, either the two independents or the three at-large. Last year, Idaho State and Eastern Kentucky played for the one double-A championship. Calabria to throw, screen whistle. Looks like illegal procedure called against the Red Gene Raiders. Gene Finney to the management office, please. Gene Finney to the management office. Syracuse defensively going to get a break now. Calabria and company down around just shy of their own 15-yard line. We'll get the call. Dead ball foul. He did a procedure. Offense, first down. So now the defense got a little chance here to tee off, but watch out for Calabria and watch out for that play up over the middle with the tight end. Calabria is 8 out of 17 so far for 129 yards. He's been intercepted once and he has a touchdown pass. Looks like he changes the play at the line. Pitch to Ehrenberg. Ehrenberg hit by number 56, Jim Rooney. That's a name we haven't seen in a while. He is a linebacker. Tony Romano. And is Rooney is. Number 56. Oh, okay. That's Tony I was Romano. Say, changed yeah. his jersey to number 56. I just saw the way he was standing, and I said, boy, he looks, looks very similar to Tony Romano, and it is. We had that happen before with Mike Charles. He lost his jersey a couple games ago, so Romano's still in there at linebacker. Both wide receivers to the left of Calabria, but he gives it to Ehrenberg, who is tackled by Jamie Kimmel, number 83. Incidentally, I noticed when they came out of the locker room that 98 Blaze Winter is definitely out for the rest of this game. He has an ice bag taped to his ankle, and Kimmel now at tackle comes in and trips up the runner. So we've got Charles and Kimmel at tackle, Tim Green on the nose, Romano and Reed at the linebackers inside, Roach and Chris Hand on the outside. Labria back to pass. There goes Mike Charles after Calabria. The race is on. He gets blocked and taken out of the play, and Calabria goes out of bounds. 
at the 33-yard line. Who threw the block? An offensive lineman, number 63, John Thornton. Took Charles out of that play. Thornton had a good angle, and Mike Charles running after Calabria threw about three different moves. Watch Calabria. There's Charles. And there's Thornton, the guard. Watch him. There he goes. Good block. Good block, right. And Calabria really makes things happen. From the 31-yard line, first and 10 for the Red Raiders. Nine and a half minutes to play third period. 28-12 Syracuse. Misdirection play with Ehrenberg behind a big tackle, and he gets out to the 36-yard line. Here's at 77, Mike Morini leading the play. Morini looks like he's like the biggest offensive lineman. 240 pounds from Massapequa, Long Island. Calabria sends Ehrenberg out as a split receiver way off to his left. Gives it straight ahead for the first down. Lines up at the 40-yard line, going to be short by about a yard to a yard and a half. The ball carrier was number 36, Styles. Last man up, Romano, now wearing, as we said before, number 56. Well, Marini's not from Massapequa. That's right, he's from Mayapak. We talked about up. that pronunciation earlier. That's right, that's up in Putnam County. That's north of Westchester County. Ehrenberg almost loses the ball. Gets to the 43 yard line. Aaron Bird, the ball carrier. Uh, Marini's a 260 pound, 6 foot 5 inch junior from Mayapak. It is Marty Murphy, who's the 6'5, 240 pound lineman from Massapequa. First and 10 for the Red Raiders from their own 43 yard line. Burgess goes wide to the right. Pitch to Hall. Back to Calabria. Pass is complete. And the play is stopped at the 32-yard line. Winding up with the football is Tony Rogers. It was a handoff to Hall. Then a pitch back to the quarterback. First a pitch to Hall. And a pitch to Calabria. Then the pass by Calabria. And the reception. What that does on that final pitch back, it really, it only takes a couple of seconds, but it gives a real tough time for the secondary. They start to come up when they read run, and that just that one second allowed Rodgers to get free. It's a little bit of razzle-dazzle on Colgate's part. Too high and counted for 84, Bill Cullen. for a pass interference but Bill Cullen actually leaped up into the defensive back so besides the ball was way out of bounds they can't call a penalty on that unless the ball's catching it. Now that uh, we know how to say it we can say that Cullen also is from May effect. Cullen 6'2", 230 pounder, a junior. Calabria to throw. Oh! It was either too long or too short. Well, it was thrown for a couple of lines. The older guys over there had 60s on, yeah. 63 and 65. It was, uh, it was a good play. The lineman tried to look like he might be a receiver, make it stand up a little taller. <laughs> Unfortunately, that will be, I believe, intentional grounding as a good rush was put on. 63 Thornton and 65 Brad Gill. One of the guards and a center were the only receivers there. So that will cost the Red Raiders a penalty. Put the ball back at the 36. Ineligible receiver is the call. Well, if he passed it, it was a play selection. 19 and 24 for Colgate and pass and run, and Syracuse showing their running game today. Three wide receivers, one setback. Calabria throws, intercepted. Derek Fredrickson at the 14-yard line. Syracuse's 10th interception of the season. 
the second one by Fredrickson both of them in this ball game Fredrickson out of the free safety spot read it well came up made a diving catch ball a bit under thrown to see Calabria's delivery and watch 22 come in on the top of your screen good diving catch as he cut in front of the intended receiver Kozak the flanker and Derek Fredrickson Picks off his second. Syracuse offense goes to work again. That's the 18th time that Calabria has been intercepted this season. Norley is the quarterback on the option to Ziegler. And Ziegler gets to about the 22-yard line. Ziegler not usually the recipient on the option running as a, as a fullback. Usually it's the tailback that will get the pitch out of the eye. Ziegler picked up four, ran to the short side of the field, so Ziegler did not have a lot of room to maneuver in. Six minutes and 50 seconds left to play. We're in the third period. Homecoming weekend at Syracuse University. And the Orange are out in front of Colgate, 28-12. The Orange is out in front of Colgate, 28-12. Morris in motion. There's Covington to the 27-yard line. Good block inside by Mark Eady. Pulled up inside. Saw the first block and just headed up downfield and allowed Covington to pick up that yardage. So Covington now 26, 154 yards and two touchdowns someday for Jamie Covington. Here comes Bruckner in with the play. Out comes Mike Morris, 36. First and 10. Balls at about the 28 and a half yard line. Open field to the left, and that's the way Bruckner goes. Hackett is to the short side. Syracuse is strong left with Stevens, the tight end left. Sigler. Brought down by number 59, Tim Driver. Boy, Driver, I like the linebackers Driver from Colgate. They're very, very active, and they move very quickly. Ziegler a little bit frustrated, I think, on that, as he was hit almost immediately, going to bring up second and just about nine. It looked like a little bit of an inside trap, but the linebacker all alone saw the hole open up and really put the shoulder pad on to Ziegler. And he's got the first down and almost to midfield. Well, that was a double screen, Carl, and it almost looked like a triple screen for a second. Matt Walker out in front missed the initial block, but they still got the ball up to the 50-yard line. Norley disguised that very, very well. Halftime, Pittsburgh, 39. Norley, 7 out of 8 for 115 yards. The ball's at the 49-yard line, first and 10, five minutes to play, third period. Mike Morris left, Marcus Hackett right. Gaden and Covington, the running backs. Norley lets it go deep for Morris, and he can't hold on to it. Almost exactly the same spot as he caught one in just a while ago that finally wound up being down on the two yard line and then Ziegler went in for the touchdown. He had to hold up for just a second. It was underthrown. You see Morris had to turn around. If he had been led, if that ball had been a little bit further, I think he could have made the catch. But as he had to turn around and position his body, he wasn't able to make it. Second and 10 from their own 49 yard line. Open field left, strong left. The pitch to Covington, and there goes Jamie to the 45-yard line, just short of the 45. About a five-yard pickup, and that'll make it third and about five for the Orange. Here comes Ziegler in with the play. Gaden comes out. Mike Morris also coming in, and Bruckner coming out. I'd venture to say they're averaging about five yards on that little tailback toss where Covington reads the block and turns it up inside or outside. As I said, it's a good bread-and-butter play, and Covington's the man they like to have with the ball on it. Third and about five. Nice catch by Marcus Hackett at the 29-yard line. He's covered Pete by... Linder was there, Jim Rafferty. Just going to say, Rafferty wasn't in bad position. What a good diving catch by Marcus Hackett, who's having his best game since the early part of the season. And we'll see the ball delivered. Watch where it is right there. Good coverage, just a good throw and a good catch. 
Hackett with three receptions for 47 yards. Number 82, Marcus Hackett. He is wide right. Bruckner coming in motion past the quarterback. Norley gives to Jamie Covington. Jamie is stopped by number 50, Dave Wolf. Covington, the ball carrier. Tackled by Dave Wolf. Wolf's a senior, one of the Red Raider co-captains, 230-pounder from Endicott down on the southern tier. A lot of football players in the southern tier on both teams. Hackett right, Mike Morris left. Second down and eight from the Colgate 27. Covington to the 21-yard line on the option. Covington on the carry. Nice block on the outside by the split end, Marcus Hackett on number 10 for the Raiders. That's Kurt Thompson, the defensive back to corner. And all you got to do is screen him and Marcus Hackett did a good job of screening, allowed him to pick up about five. Going to bring up third and about two. Covington now unofficially with 29 carries, 169 yards. He has scored two touchdowns and thrown a touchdown pass. Here goes Covington again. To about the 12-yard line. Guess who made a block on that? Mrs. Ziegler's son, Brent, again on that lead block, which is all important, got right down on the knee. And we'll see Ziegler. There's Ziegler, 43, out in front. There's Covington with the ball, but I will lose Ziegler's block. See, it always happens to the blockers. They never get any of the glory. But you see, the result is number 49 knocked out. Jeff Hoff, the defensive back, was taken out of the play by Ziegler. From the 12-yard line, first and 10. Covington again trying to get outside away from Kimmel. He does, and he's going to go all the way for his third touchdown of the ballgame. Covington, Jerry Fury, the offensive center and the captain. Jamie Covington having his best day as an Orangeman. This will be the 13th straight for Carpenter Fury if he makes it, and he does. Incidentally, on that play, Harold Gaden made a really nice block right on the goal line and allowed Covington to get inside. Covington really showed a lot of speed and power to the outside, put his head down, and there was Gaden right in front with a key block, and he was able to get into the end zone. There's the toss. Same play they've been using all day. He just outruns number 80. Rogers, and there's the block by Gaden. And number 81, Kimmel, had a hold of the back of his shirt. But couldn't slow him down and couldn't hang on. And Jamie has his third touchdown of the ballgame. He has thrown a touchdown pass and run for three touchdowns. And Syracuse leads 35-12 with just a few seconds over two minutes remaining in the third period. 20 and 22 back deep for the Red Raiders. Joe Kozak and Rich Ehrenberg. But that looks to be about a six-yard average, Carl, for Jamie Covington. 190 yards, 31 carries. There's Carpenteri's kick. Ehrenberg, about five yards deep, and he won't run it out. Carpenteri getting hot now as Syracuse always had problems getting the ball out of the end zone with the kickers they faced. And beautiful move right there by Carpenteri, put it in the end zone. We're looking right over the shoulder. One of the assistant coaches, he's diagramming something to, that he wanted a defense to look at. All right, the Red Raiders are out to the line of scrimmage. Steve Calabria, the quarterback. High formation, Tracy Hall, the tailback, and Hall gets just a yard or two. Make the fans, despite the fact that Syracuse fans should be enjoying it more because Syracuse is well ahead in the ball game. I think the Colgate fans are enjoying it too because Colgate has had uh, some fine defensive and offensive plays as well. It's been an exciting ball game. It's been an interesting ball game. 
And, uh, and we don't mean to indicate that it's over yet either at 35 to 12. Remember last year's game, Calabria is just getting ready to unload. Weak side blitz by Rich Roach. Roach, Green, and Charles all in on Calabria. Roach puts him down way back at the three-yard line. Rich Roach on the weak side, which is to Calabria's right. There he is, number 38. Had a bad ankle. Wasn't sure whether he was going to play, but he certainly played very, very tough on that and put Calabria right on about the three-yard line. Big hole now for Calabria. That makes it third and 27. Both of his backs in the I formation are lined up in the backfield. The fullback brings it out to about the 10. That was 36. George Stiles. And that is fourth down. Syracuse blocked Colgate's first punt attempt. The Red Raiders are going to have to kick from deep in their own territory. Now the punter is going to be lined up on about the one yard line. Now he's backing up about a yard deep into the end zone. So he's standing about 12 yards deep. There's the snap and there's the punt. He got it away. It's not long but it's high and Bruckner makes a fair catch at the 43 yard line. So it's a 33 yard punt. No return. Larry Skolnick. Okay, lucky to get that off, Carl. Larry Skolnick to the management office. Big Mike Charles, number 70, senior defensive tackle from Newark, New Jersey. And kill boy! All right, Greg Christodoulou is the quarterback. Six seconds left to play in third period. Ziegler and Glenn Moore are the running backs. Moore, number 44, is the tailback. And here is Glenn Moore's first carry. Makes it a good one to about the 30-yard line. Hit by number 44, Gene Bucci, at the end of the third period. Just going to say, I think Glenn Moore needs a, wants a chance to show himself. He's been beaten out by Covington. There's a good look at Tim Green, the nose guard. But watch Glenn Moore in his first attempt at tailback today. There he is. 44, Bucci makes the stop. Bucci's a junior from Endicott, another Southern Tier kid. As we said, a lot of kids from the Southern Tier on both teams. Gene Endicott. It's the United States Naval Academy steaming into the Carrier Dome next Saturday afternoon as Syracuse winds up its home schedule. The Orange will entertain the midshipmen here at the Carrier Dome kickoff 1.30 next Saturday afternoon and Syracuse winds it up on the road against Boston College in West Virginia. Colgate is down at uh, Franklin Field to play University of Pennsylvania next week. Again, our thanks to Mrs. Ziegler and to all the rest of the folks who have written to us. We'd sure like to hear from some more players, parents, friends, and relatives, and from just all Syracuse football fans or college football fans, Colgate football fans, wherever you're watching Syracuse football. Hackett in motion and turns and goes the other way. Chris Doodle spins and goes the other way. And the play winds up gaining about a yard. A lot of movement, but not much gain. 51 makes the defensive play. John McCabe. One of those linebackers we talked about. Very active for Colgate. The option, they put Hackett in motion, took him back the other way. Might have been Chris Doodle would have been better off pitching the ball. But he trucked it up and picked up about a half yard. Marcus Hackett goes right. Nick Bruckner left. Chris Dool with Glenn Moore as his tailback. He steps away from the center, Jerry Fury without the ball. Well, I'll tell you what happened there. Apparently, Fury thought the ball was coming on the second or third count, and Chris Dool pulled out on the first count. So what happens is illegal procedure going to cost him five. And here comes Larry Morris, number 25 into the Syracuse tailback position, replacing Glenmore 44. You can see Chris Dulu now. He'll move away without the, whoops. <laughs> Gee, that's a frustrating feeling there. The pitch to Larry Morris. Let the little guy go to the 33-yard line. Larry Morris, the ball carrier. And again, hit 
by number 50, Dave Wolf, the linebacker, doing a fine job for Colgate. But Morris has got speed. Now both Morris brothers are in. Mike Morris, 36, and Larry Morris, 25. There's another one back home in Air Mass. It's only a junior. And another one waiting to see whether or not the NFL is going to play this year. Third and 13. Chris Cadulo throws. Ooh. Intended for and almost complete to the tight end, Brodsky. A little high, but he could have come down with it. 13-33 to play. 35-12 Syracuse leads. It'll be fourth and 12, and the ball's at the 33-yard line, and Colgate has an injured player. And you'll notice out there that Colgate also has a female trainer. There we see the first down. Syracuse it was very close before the second half got started. Syracuse now up to 20 to 10 in first down department. Rushing obvious balls 236, about 200 a la Jamie, Jamie Covington. Passing a little bit to Calabria, 14 yards, 155 to 141. Total offense, 377 to 239, Syracuse's favor. And one thing that Syracuse has not done much of today that they have in the past, the turnover department way down. And of course, the third down conversion, Syracuse 10 for 13. 7 for 13 for Colgate. Syracuse seemingly improving in the departments that they needed to improve in. One being the turnovers, the second being those third down conversions and able to take pressure off the defense. One well, yard run by Jamie Covington. Carpentary's kick made it 7 0 and a 14 yard run by Covington. And the Carpentary kick made it 14 0. And Kozak from Calabria for 41 yards. They didn't get the extra point. Syracuse led 14 to 6. The injured player is number 73 for the Red Raiders, Pat Gambone. Carpentry to attempt one of about 51 yards on fourth down. Carpentry's long is 45 yards. Here's the 51 yard attempt. It's plenty long enough, but it's no good. Off to the left. This 51 yard field goal attempt turns the ball over to the Red Raiders at the 33 yard line. First and 10 for the Red Raiders. Syracuse led 14 6 at the end of the first period, 21 12 at halftime, and 35 12 at the end of the third period. Now we are about two minutes into the fourth and final quarter. Syracuse Colgate from the Carrier Dome. Steve Calabria, the quarterback, three wide receiver. Throws on the run, complete at the 47 yard line. To number 20, Joe Kozak. Incidentally, for Syracuse 59, Jerry Kimmel has checked in as a linebacker for Syracuse. And Mike Charles is going to come out. We'll see the delivery on the run by Calabria. Right on target, and Kozak picks up the first down. Okay, two wide receivers to the right. Kozak and Ehrenberg, one left. Calabria rolling right. Nice reception at the 33-yard line. Kozak catches it in heavy traffic at the 33-yard line. Well, on that rollout situation, it gives Calabria a longer time to find his receivers by the same token it gives the receivers a longer time if they're covered to break away from the coverage and that's exactly what happened here as he rolled out to his right he Look really how, took a lot of time Carl how many times he wanted to throw the ball before he threw it and actually Kozak was covered early but broke away credit Kozak with a heads up play first down for the Raiders from the Syracuse 33 that was going to be way out of bounds caught by Derek Fredrickson but five or more yards over the sideline, and there are a couple of frags uh, down on the field. One way over at the far sideline. Ralph Jolene, number 93, comes out defensively for Syracuse as Mike Charles comes in. It's going to be a hold against Syracuse downfield. Must have held up one of the receivers. was about 30 yards away from the play. Wasn't yeah, it? I don't. Coach McPherson. Holy. 
Not what you would call ecstatic over that call. All right, the ball is now at the 22-yard line. Colgate at the Syracuse, 22. One setback is Terenzi. Calabria rolling out. Into the end zone, nobody there. And it's incomplete. He's smart. Calabria's smart. They say he intended for Ehrenberg, but he knew that he had to throw that away. And as long as he got it downfield in the general area, they're not going to call, of course, intentional grounding. And he just unloaded that right down the middle of the field. Saturdays at 11 p.m. Sundays now at 1.30 on Channel 24. All right, now Kozak and Ehrenberg go left. Mike Bone is right. Terenzi hit by Tony Romano, short of the 15-yard line. Terenzi, the ball carrier. Still lots of time in this ball game. 12 Kimmel minutes, 14 Romano. seconds to play. Syracuse leading 35-12. Chris Hand comes in for David Lee defensively. So another pass rusher or run stopper rather than a defensive back. It is third and about five. Calabria being chased, lets it go on the run, intended for Burgess, but he can't catch up with it. Ron Hobby on the coverage. And that'll make it fourth down, and we may be looking at a field goal attempt by Brian Byrne. It's very difficult as Calabria rolls to his right defensively. It's very, very hard. He's got good feet. It's very hard to hem him in. They don't have any outside contain, and he just throws the ball, hoping that it can be caught in the end zone and Fourth down. Just announced the official attendance dale at 36,676. Brian Byrne is in for the field goal attempt. A 33 Delay of the game against Colgate. Charles and Sean kind of a embrace there as they went into block. The kick Shaw holding on to Charles and Charles continuing on down the field. It all goes for nothing as a delay of game will cost them five. Colgate is three out of six in field goals. This one will be about 38 yards worth. Almost straight on. It's going to get there. It's good. Syracuse offense now going to get a chance to take over as the score jumps to 35-15. Most of the pundits had this game figured as a 10-point difference for Syracuse. Two little arms there on the cheek of one of the Syracuse cheerleaders. Most experienced outdoor people. Please turn to the WSYR lucky number box on page 25 of your game program. A very jovial and happy crowd. There's something about an indoor football game and somehow, of course, uh, you never have to worry about the weather being bad. So you can be a little more selective in what you wear. If you wear, want to wear a costume and if you, uh, you just get to be more comfortable inside. So a lot of folks, and this is Halloween weekend anyway, so a lot of folks have come in costume or feeling a little more frivolous perhaps than they otherwise might. And as you mentioned, Colgate is the last chance they get to beat Syracuse until 1987. All right, here's Byrne, who just made the 38-yard field goal to kick it off. High to about the two-yard line, fumbled by Covington. And the official is going to let him down it in the end zone. That Okay, they'll bring it out to the 20 yard line after the touchback. Thought it might be a safety there for a minute. Yeah, if you fumble it in the two or three yard line and then go back into the end, I don't know uh, exactly where he fielded the ball. Yeah, where he touched it first and whether it was a muff or a fumble. A muff means you never really had control of it. A fumble is when you have control and lose it. All right, Chris Dulu is the quarterback. Pitch to Harold Gaydon. Look at him go. 
one guy to beat and he couldn't do it at the 30 yard line or he would have been gone. 50 Dave Wolf on the tackle. Interesting, Boy, he's quick. Interesting story about Gaden. Coach McPherson two weeks ago said that they were going to play him a lot more and he didn't play in the last two weeks. This week they said they were going to play him and they were going to make no mistake about it. And now as the fourth quarter's well about 11:22 left, he gets the call. Looks like he's going to be playing a lot in the fourth quarter. Glenn Moore is also in there at the other running back spot. Pack it in motion. Here's Moore to the 37 yard line. Glenn Moore on the carry. Gaden, uh, one of the reasons they felt that early Gaden couldn't play was the fact that they were forced into passing situations. And Gaden, who was primarily a runner in high school, obviously would have had to pick up a lot of blocking techniques and skills, and they didn't think he was ready. Now they need a chance where they can run the ball, they can let Gaden do what he does best, which is run. And now he's in as the tailback or the upback in the split back set. Gaden and Morris, and this time it's going to be Larry Morris, and the little guy gets to the 40-yard line. Larry Morris. Nice block by Gaden. I've been watching him now every play, and he certainly is doing a good job blocking on the runs. As we said, one of the things they worried about was putting him in again a, a Penn State or a Pittsburgh and saying, we want you to pick up these on-rushing linemen, Harold, and uh, as a freshman, it's tough to do. And as we said, Harold, primarily a runner in high school, taking a little while to learn how to block. I think he's coming along very well. They're very pleased with his progress. Mike Morris is wide to the left. Everybody else is in close. The pitch to Glenn Moore. And Moore is into Colgate territory to the 47-yard line. It'll be Syracuse first and 10 from the Colgate 47. Here comes Larry Morris, Rodney Carter. Glenn Moore still has a, a bad knee. He's taken a couple of shots on it. They want to give him some rest. And of course, Jamie Covington doing such a good job at tailback. He's had a difficult time beating him up, but it gives you great depth at the running back position. From the Colgate 47, first and 10. Larry Morris to the 34-yard line, stopped by Gene Bucci, number 44. Again, a good block by Harold Gaden inside. He certainly has picked up that face of the game. At least he's demonstrating it in the last three or four plays we've seen him in. And I don't mean to ramble on about Harold Gaden, but he's been a big part of a lot of controversy about why he hasn't played more. And I've been keeping an eye on him, as I said, and I think so far he's, he's got an A. Glenn Moore. A flag as Moore takes it inside the 30. Flag thrown by the referee from behind the play. To hold. Yeah. Sunday, November 7th. The New York Field Band Conference returns for its third. Perhaps reminiscent of the hold against, I don't know who it was on, but perhaps reminiscent of the hold against Pittsburgh. I don't think it was on the play side. In other words, the hold, the hold took place away from the play side and was essentially useless. I mean, Nine. you have your good holds and your bad holds. <laughs> Holding. Offense. All right, that puts the ball back at the 47-yard line where it'll be first and 25 for Syracuse. A lot of the fans, I think, are hoping that they'll see more of Jamie Covington. He's got 190 yards. They'd like to probably see him have a 200-yard ball game. Then they want 300. There goes Bruckner toward the far sideline. separate fakes and Chris Dulu is trying to break away and he finally does. Look at that kid go and he fumbles the ball but it looked like Syracuse recovered at the 32 yard line. That was a boring play. <laughs> Look at that. You, you need an architect to draw the lines and figure out where everybody went on that. Well, we'll see if we get it on the replay. Here it is. Watch. I'd love to see that. Fake All to Moore. The fakes. Another fake. Fake to a, the flanker around. And now in trouble. Had a fake tackle. Yeah. A fake fumble. Fake block. And the only person not faked out was the cameraman. Great job. Camera person. Second and eight. Chris Cadulo to Morris. Whoa, look at Whoa. it go. Whoa. Oh. Tackle made at the two-yard line. By Jim Rafferty. You think he can accelerate? You think he's got some speed? The 
30 Perfect. yard Still run. <laughs> By Larry Morris, so here comes brother Mike into the uh, Syracuse lineup, replacing freshman Gordon Jeffries. Morris on four carries has 49 yards now. All right, first and goal from the two. Christodoulou pulling six. Christodoulou takes it to Morris. Morris scores. Mike Morris is for Larry Morris his first Syracuse touchdown. There is an injured player, Colgate player, over toward the far sideline. You know, maybe uh, <laughs> thinking about it now, that the fact that uh, Mrs. Morris, the Morris brothers' mother. Uh, yelled at Coach McFerrin. You know, you, you always afraid when somebody's mother yells at you. Although she didn't really yell at him, she, she did feel that uh, perhaps Larry particularly wasn't playing enough. And I guess she, uh, whether she said it directly to the coach or not, but she let some people know. Who that. Well, Mrs. Morris, that run was for you. There's Glenn Moore and Larry Morris. There was discussion on what a great job he did blocking Glenn. And I, that's what uh, I think Coach McPherson is saying now, Mrs. Morris. Uh, nice play by your your boy. I think he uh, he and the referee are might have some trying to get somebody's attention. Yeah. Spectators are asked, please don't throw any objects onto the field. Apparently, something ended up on the field, and Coach McPherson wanted a, an announcement made on please the PA system. Please don't throw any objects on the field. You know, the way that rivalry used to be, is uh, you could have thrown a spectator from the other school on the field. It was very, very intense years ago, and right now it's an intense scoring effort. Syracuse going for the extra point. How many in a row now for Carpentieri if he makes it? 14. He's made every one he's ever attempted. It's good. And that makes it 42 to 15 with seven and a half minutes to play. Dunlap said at the beginning he thought it would not be his highest scoring game as last year. Obviously he was not right on the button about that, but I will say this about Colgate. They've got a good team, but uh, today they're in a little bit over their heads with Syracuse. Uh, Syracuse uh, down in the wind department and certainly looking for a good game today, and they've gotten it out of the offensive unit and the defensive unit. Here's an interesting uh, the passing away today of Mr. Bill something to watch for. Bill was the uh, play -play Carpenter has now kicked six extra points in this ball game. The record for Syracuse is seven, set by Jimmy Brown against Colgate back in the 1950. That was the game when Jimmy Brown scored 42 points. Jim Brown, 43. Jim Brown, that name's familiar. B R O W N Brown. Remember, he set the record, the NCAA scoring record, by coming in and kicking an extra point very late in the ball game. And a lot of people booed because they thought Coach Schwartzwalder was trying to pour it on. There's Ehrenberg to the 15, almost to the 20, and hit very hard. Rich Ehrenberg on the return. Hit by number 25, Larry Morris. He's pumped up high now. Please, number one, up high. Hello to Queens. <laughs> uh, maybe we can find that a little bit more about that in the Syracuse record book. But Brown got, uh, I think, six touchdowns for 36 and seven extra points for 43 points. And 42 was the NCAA single team scoring record. There goes Calabria, all down by number 99, Bill Pendon. Late in the game, Syracuse scored, and uh, Jimmy Brown was sent back in to kick the extra point to get his 43rd point to send uh, the NCAA single-game scoring record, which still stands, I, I'm sure, 
And some of the fans thought that there, it was unnecessarily pouring it on, not realizing that uh, Brown was going for a single game scoring record. Calabria with three wide receivers, 644 to play. Straight ahead to the 25 or 26 yard line is Stiles, the fullback. Play made by 56 Romano. Ordinarily wears 54, but in the second half he's wearing 56. Just to run out of 54s. All American Mike Charles, number 70, is cheering section. One setback. Calabria to throw. Floats one down the sideline. Nobody there. Caught by Brett Ziegler at the bench. And he took a shot from Jamie Kimmel who blindsided him. It was a good hit. Wasn't late at all, but Calabria, as we said, took a while getting that ball off, and Jamie Kimmel just came from the blind side and put the, the hit on Calabria. I'm sure he's all right. Calabria is now 11 out of 24 for 188 yards. Watch the hit as he comes. He doesn't even see Kimmel coming from the left side of the screen. He just gets the ball off, and Kimmel puts the hit on him. Official right there decided nothing wrong with the hit, so Calabria, to the applause of the crowd, is going to have to take a little rest. Number 88, Mike Kovach is the punter. Syracuse has 10, Ron Hobby, 13, Nick Bruckner back at about their own 40-yard line. Six minutes left to play in the ballgame. Long spiral. At the 22-yard line, Bruckner. Good block by Hobby. Bruckner still going forward to the 42 or 43-yard line. You know, there are some great little vignettes, some great little... Uh, efforts by different people and Bruckner has been doing a great job of catching punts over the shoulder uh, never makes the mistake hasn't dropped the ball filling in for Coban of course and he does a nice job here good footwork look at the balance on Bruckner and he surges ahead for a couple extra yards that was Colgate's fifth punt that one worth 52 yards punters averaging almost 44 yards a punt there's Harold Gaten to the 47 yard line Syracuse has not had to punt the ball yet in this ball game. Some new people in for Syracuse center. Pete Kaufman in number 51 replacing Jerry Fury. Number 64 in for the orange Chuck Sweeney. So we get some substitution here manning it another guard. Jeffries is the wide receiver to the right. Carter is to the left. Glenn Moore to the Colgate 45 yard line. Hit by number 45, Mike White, and number 10, Curtis Thompson. Coming up on about five minutes to play. In for Syracuse now, number 28, Eric Wade. I think this will be his first offensive play this season. Wade will go to the right side. He is a senior from Largo, Maryland. Nowhere for Larry Morris. Morris with 50 yards, Gaden with 33, Glenn Moore with 37, Ziegler with 13, and Jamie Covington with 190. It's a pretty fair distribution until you get down to Covington. It, they feel they have a lot of depth at running back and they're getting a chance to play a lot of people. Gaden getting some playing time today. Second and 11 from the eye. The pitch to Glenn Moore and he gets to the 39-yard line. Glenn Moore was the starting tailback in the spring. Uh, Jamie Covington uh, out of spring practice, and Glenn Moore then banged up, uh, eventually gave way to Covington, and he couldn't beat him back out. So Glenn Moore, a fine tailback in his own right. Teresa Connelly, Moore now with about 43 yards. He's carried the ball five times. Now watch out for Jeffries here, the wide receiver. They get a chance to go to him. Glenn Moore to the 35-yard line. 
gives him 48 yards now in six carries for Colgate. Ehrenberg with 56 yards. Hall with 20. Lorenzi with 10. And Stiles with 27. See if Jeffries can catch a pass here. Jeffries, number 19, wide receiver, got a great deal of talent. Hasn't been able to break into the starting lineup. Regular pro set. Wide receivers both ways. Backs in the eye. I don't really look for him to throw it. The pullback carries to maybe the 31 or 32 yard Carol line. Hayden, Three minutes to play, a 42 to 15 lead. Uh, I think the coach is going to refrain from trying to get any more points and uh, making it look like even he's trying to. Get anymore. Of course, if you're one and six, you don't don't yeah. have to be too concerned about that on occasion. Larry Morris is the tailback. Long count by Chris Dulu. Pitch to Morris. Big hole, and he is gone. example again of the, of the difference between Division One and Division One Double A is the depth that Syracuse has at running back. Larry Morris, of course, as Carpenter Curry is going to kick another extra point. That the running yeah. back situation certainly is a telling point as Syracuse has a, a good deal of depth when everybody's healthy and a big difference right there. But Larry Morris, the second string back, showing great acceleration. That is seven for seven extra points for Carpentier. Watch Morris go. Gaden in front with the blocking. Morris with great lateral movement, and then he just turns on the speed. And I'm glad you mentioned Gaden because he did do a nice job of blocking. I'm impressed with Gaden. I think he's matured as a football player, and I think we're going to be able to see a lot of Harold Gaten. He's only a freshman. Larry Morris, only a sophomore. they got a lot of young people there. Glenn Moore, only a junior. You've made a lot of good points about the differences, Division One and Division One AA. Depth, that uh, half-step extra speed, the 15 to 20 to 30 extra pounds per man. Seven or eight yards deep in the end zone. Rich Harrenburg, in the end and he won't bring it out. The referee will to the 20-yard line where it will be first and 10 for Colgate. 2.40 to play. Syracuse 49 to 15. Last year the final was 47-24. So we're fairly close to that now. Calabria, I believe, last year statistically certainly a lot more impressive last year. But he lost a good receiver in Rodgers, the big split end who eventually went to the Los Angeles Raiders. Incomplete. Hedgepeth breaks it up at the 40-yard line. Hedgepeth, number 23. He'll be back next year also. It's a young That's Syracuse a team, number 61. Mario Marrero, I believe, in on the nose for the Orange. One linebacker on the outside. Green still in. Ralph Jolene. Kimlin Reed. Last year, Calabria was 23 out of 41 for 297 yards and three touchdowns. Complete. Big hit by Jerry Allen at the 25 yard line. One thing I think that the Syracuse coaching staff has got to feel confident as they look at this game is that there's two people they're going to have back next year, and they've got a lot of people they're going to have back. It's a young football team. The offensive line is going to lose some people, but I think they believe that, that they have the makings of being very competitive in another year or so. Final two minutes of play now at the Carrier Dome. Syracuse 49-15. It'll be Navy here at the Carrier Dome next week. 
Colgate down at Franklin Field in Pennsylvania against the University of Pennsylvania. Despite the fact Colgate only able to put 15 points on the board, I've got to believe that they're going to come back from this, and for the rest of their schedule, they're going to be very, very tough, especially in their division. They do play another Division I team, Temple, I believe. They're Terry Curry, tapped in a long time for a win. But I think Colgate going to do very, very well this year in, in terms of the playoffs, now that that uh, is over, controversy. So Colgate, although today not especially effective, I think Carl's going to be very good this year. Three wide receivers, Calabria back to throw, being chased. Throws on the run, complete. Nice play, 33-yard line. Complete to number 34 for the Red Raiders, Stacy Hall. Putting much more of a rush on now on Calabria. Naturally, when he's out of that pocket, I like the way he delivers that ball on the run. He doesn't even set up. He just puts that arm back and pulls the trigger. A good find. Recruited by actually two Division three schools, CW Post and Towson State, which now I guess is a Division two school. A real find for Colgate and a good quarterback. And he's had his problems today, and he has one right there as he just lost the handle to Tim Green. Going to pick that up, the freshman out of Liverpool. Calabria's stats so far in the ball game: 13 out of 27, 203 yards, thrown for one touchdown. He's been intercepted twice, and that time had the ball taken away from him. Nice hand for Steve Peach, the initial starting quarterback of the year, who lost his job. And Coach McPherson says he likes the way Steve Peach has come back and responded. Now a lot of kids wouldn't do that. Glenn Moore to the 25, Glenn Moore to the 20 with a minute to play. Uh, that shows a lot of character as far as I'm concerned. Uh, there are lots of players who would uh, who refuse to go in or who would go in unwillingly after having not played for several ball games with a minute to play and the ball game uh, well underhand at uh, 49 to 15. Uh, that reflects a lot of credit on Steve Peach and his attitude about the coaching staff and his attitude about Syracuse University. Coach McPherson made that public at the press conference, his weekly press conference. We're going to get an illegal. Illegal use of the hands. Offense. First down. Illegal use of hands. But uh, as you said, Carl, I agree with you 100%. Steve Peach is a, is a classy kid, and he's only a sophomore. So they've got some depth of quarterback, too. Final 54 seconds of the ball game. Jeffries to the right, Carter to the left. Steve Peach is the quarterback. There's Harold Gaten. And Gaten gets to about the 18 yard line. Hit by number 48, Tim Anderson. It's been a good ball game. It's been uh, well played, it's been clean, it's been uh, hard fought. Uh, Colgate has played about as well as probably they are able to play against a bigger, faster, stronger team. Syracuse has played well, but they have the advantage in being bigger, stronger, and faster. Both teams very well coached. Well, Fred Dunlap, uh, they said at the beginning of the year the offensive line was going to be one of their problems in, in terms of rebuilding. And when you're up against a Division I school, again, that's one of the first places it's noticeable. I thought they did a fine job for the first quarter, but of course it's, it's just kind of a, it's a, it's a game of attrition and as they wear down, it's gonna affect their game a lot more than it does the bigger school. So Syracuse, a good effort with 25 seconds left. New people in virtually at almost every position for Syracuse motion, which I don't think will be called. Morris. He wants another one, doesn't he? Boy, he's got quick feet. I'll tell you, he can really accelerate, but his feet just, they pitter-patter right over the, the markers. He's amazing how much distance he makes. Watch this. Just watch his feet. That gives him eight carries and 89 yards. And he gets not only 89 yards, he gets a standing ovation from the fans as the main Morris is magic in Syracuse. Two, one. That's it, the ball game is over. Final score.